Good afternoon, good afternoon, good afternoon. I have a word that the Lord gave me yesterday and it really, really uh, touched my heart because it's very powerful. And uh, the Lord is really calling his children. He's calling his remnant. He's calling those that he predestined into this earth. He's calling those that they are seeking him and the ones that are falling asleep and they are slumbering. The ones that they are in relaxation mode. He's calling every single one of us to wake up, to wake up and be enlisted in the army of the Lord. That's what he's doing. He's shaking. He's shaking everything around us and inside of us. He's dismantling every stronghold in the mind. He's exposing things that is being hidden inside of us. They will entangle us and will hurt us at the end of the, the, the way. He doesn't want that for us. So he's really just opening up a huge Pandora box in our life. And we're going to have to head on it, hit on that. And we're going to have to face it. And we're going to have to seek the Lord. For the Lord to come inside of us. And cleanse us and purify us completely. So we will be in total alignment with him. We will be in total alignment to his word. To his ways. There is no other way. There is no other way. Even if you keep on running away from him. And you just say, okay, I'm not ready for this right now. Let me go and do this and do that. I'm going to tell you, sons, it's going to get to the point. He's seeking you. And no matter what you do, no matter where you're going, he's going to find you. And it's better to come. It's better to come than to go to that point. That he's going to find you. You don't want to be found. You better come. Because the trial that we're going to face are harder. So sometimes we make our life harder. And we don't even understand why it's happening. It's because of disobedience. Disobedience. Open the doors to curses. Disobedience to the Lord. When we run away from Him, we are disobeying Him. When we run away from Him into our own ways and do our own things... We are becoming rebellious. And that has a price. And that price, he forgave us for our wrong choices. But the consequences, he will not take them away. So you better think twice. If the Lord is calling you on not running away. And come humbly to the feet of the cross. And seek his face. And become a living sacrifice for him. become a torch for Christ. And how do we get there? Through intimacy, through seeking his face, through seeking his presence, to being totally naked in front of him and surrender to him completely. Why? Because he's calling us the army of Jesus Christ. <laughs> he's calling his soldiers. <laughs> It's not about a title. It's not about a position. It's not about money. It's not about nothing. It's about those that he already placed it inside of us. That seed. That seed that he placed. That he predestined us into this ground for these times. He's calling those. So you better stop, listen, surrender, and be humble. The lower you go in front of him, the more humble you become, the easier it's going to be. And the more he's going to bless us because we are totally naked in front of him. And we have surrendered all of it. Not a piece of us, not a part of us. We have totally surrendered all of it to him. And that's what he wants. He needs that in order for him to come inside of us. And as a good surgeon, to cleanse us, to purify us, to discontaminate us, and to set us ablaze for him into our calling and purpose. Surrender all to him. Your calling, your purpose, your anointing, your family, your home, your career, your walk, your talk, your heart, your soul, your ears, your eyes, your mind, nose, whatever, completely submerge into him and him alone there is no other way that's what he wants that's what he's looking for those that are totally submitted and committed to who to him to him 
walking in obedience, seeking his face daily, placing him as the priority in our lives. Who is before Christ becomes your idol. We cannot have any idols before him. He is the beginning and the end. Before him, nothing. Nothing. He's the center. He's the core of our lives. He's the one that moves us. We move because of him. We walk because of him. We talk because of him. It's all because of him. He needs to be the center. The center. There is no other way of living. And in this dead letter, Apostle Paul is speaking to Timothy. And it's coming from the book of 2 Timothy 2, 1 through 8. Lord, in the name of Jesus, before I speak this word, Holy Spirit, I ask you that you be enthroned totally in my lips. And that this word comes out as a sword that is caught in every lie of hell. Upon every single one of those at the sound of my voice. Is dismantling every assignment of hell. Every lie, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Every stronghold, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Every spirit of dissection. Every spirit of Antichrist. Every spirit of Jezebel. Every spirit of Absalom. Every spirit that is moving, Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, dismantle, dismantle, dismantle every assignment of hell. That they're going to be able to see truth, Lord. That they're going to be able to hear you, Lord. That they're going to be able to see you, Lord. And what you are telling them to do, Lord, they will walk in alignment, Lord. In alignment to your will. In alignment to your word. In alignment to your kingdom in the name of Jesus. Jesus be enthroned. Take over, Lord. At the sound of my voice, Jesus, take over. Upon every mind, every walk, every flesh, Lord. Take over, Lord, and invade us completely, Lord. The word comes from 2 Timothy 2, 1 through 8. It says, be strong. <laughs> this is Apostle Paul speaking to Timothy. This is a beautiful, beautiful word. And he says, so you, my son, be a strong. It means what? Constantly strengthening. Constantly strengthening. How are we going to get there? In his presence. In his presence. In that presence, there is an exchange. There is an exchange that takes place. There is an exchange that takes place and he takes us into the chambers of his heart and he transforms our life forever. And he overflows his love upon us and he changes from the inside out. So how can we be strengthened in his presence and empowered in the grace that is to be found only in Christ Jesus? Where can we find that grace in Christ Jesus? Why did he give us that grace? For us to be able to change. For us to be able to overcome. What we cannot overcome in our own strength. The grace was not given to us. For us to be sinning and keep on going into the same th sin. No, it was given to us for us to shift around from sin and walk into righteousness, into truth, into light, into his kingdom, into his will, into his word. And he says, these things, what are those? The doctrine, the precepts, the admonitions, the sum of my ministry, which you have heard me teach in the presence of many witnesses. And trust as a treasure to reliable and faithful men who will also be capable and qualified to teach others. Others. We have to become disciples of Christ. Through disciples of Christ that we carry. We carry Christ on this ground. That when people look at us, they don't see us anymore. They see Christ in us. 
That's when we become true disciples of Christ. It's just Jesus. <laughs> and only Jesus. Only Jesus. And he said, take with me your share of hardship. We need to go through every tribulation. Passing through the difficulties where you are called to endure. Difficulties that we are called to endure. Why? Because that is preparing us to overcome everything that comes our way. Like a good soldier of Christ Jesus. <laughs> because we are soldiers of Christ. Thank you, Lord. He says, no soldier in active service gets entangled in the ordinary business. What is that? Affairs of civilian life. He avoids them. He stay away from that. So that he may please the one who enlisted him to serve. Why? Because if we will get entangled in the things of the world, can we serve Christ? No. Why? Because we get contaminated with everything that is up there. So these are the times that Jesus Christ is calling us to be caught and separated for him. To be totally discontaminated. To be totally consecrated. To be totally following him. Getting into his word. Walking into his word. Eating in his water. Sleeping in his word. The word of Christ. Which is the only absolute truth in our lives. Be careful who you follow. Be careful who you listen to. Be careful what your ears are exposed. What seeds are you listening to? What seeds are coming inside your heart? Be very careful. Listen to this. And if anyone competes as an athlete in competitive games, he's not crowned with the wrath of victory unless he competes according to the rules. Why? Because if not, it will be disqualified. So what is the Lord telling us to do? That we need to love him with all our hearts. With all our hearts, all our soul, and all we are. Do we love him like that? Do we love him like that? That we are able to sacrifice it all for the calling of Christ in our life. Are you there with Christ? Or what are you seeking? What are you looking for? What are you pleasing? Who are you pleasing? What are you following? Be very careful. What is moving your heart? What is hitting the motive in our hearts? Very careful. What are the motive that moves us in our hearts? He said, the hardworking farmer who labors to produce crops ought to be the first to receive his share of the crops. Because what we sow, that's what we're going to reap. What are you sowing? Be very careful. Think over the things I am saying. Grasp their application. Heed these words. For the Lord will grant you insight and understanding in everything. Remember Jesus Christ, the ever living Lord who has risen from the dead as the prophesied king, descendant from David, king of Israel, according to my gospel, the good news that I preach. So who are we following? Who are we following? Are we are enlisted in the army of Christ. Or we are entangled in the things of the world. We are entangled in familiar affairs. We are entangled in familiar faces. We are entangled in familiarity. What are we entangled in? What is holding us down? What is not allowing us to keep on moving forward into our calling and purpose? For us to get up in the morning and seek the Lord's face. 
not to stay in his presence for hours. What is holding us down? Facebook? Social media? Family members? A career? Addictions? What is holding you down? In Matthew 24, 13 says, But those that stay firm, they will be safe. They will be safe. Those that stay firm until the end will be safe. Are you ready to be safe? Are you ready? Are you firm until the end? Or are you walking into waters? Sweet and sour water cannot be together. Oil and vinegar cannot mix. Negative and positive cannot stay together. They repel. The same way darkness and light can walk in the same body. If we entice our life and we entangle our life with darkness, with deception, with the things of the world, we will be totally entangled. So we cannot carry the light of Christ in our hearts because he cannot come where darkness is. So we have a decision that we need to make. So you need to ask yourself, what do I carry? Who am I seeking? Who am I pleasing? What am I doing? What do I want to live for the rest of my life? Where do I want to go if I were to die tomorrow? Where do I go when I die? If you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I want you to pray this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, today I surrender my life completely into your arms. I repent of every sin that I have committed, every decision that I have made. Lord, I, I ask you for repentance, Lord. Forgive me, Lord, from the bottom of my heart. I repent from the bottom of my heart. I know that you died in the cross for me. And on the third day, the Father resurrected you from the dead. And you are seated at the right hand of the Father interceding for my life. Today, I surrender my life completely into your arms lord come live in my heart be the lord of my life i break every covenant with the devil with the world with my words with my walk with my flesh and open a new covenant with jesus christ as my lord and my savior be enthroned inside my body change me from the inside out let your kingdom come inside of me and take over lord the day that i die when I open up my eyes, I will be in your arms. In Jesus' name I pray. If you pray this prayer, you have come from darkness to light. <laughs> from this section to truth. He's the only absolute truth. Follow him all the days of your life. And now I'm going to play the shofar. And at the sound of the shofar, every assignment of hell, everything that is holding you down, Every lie of hell that is entangling you, that is enticing you, that is holding you away from the creator, away from him who called you to come into his army. Father, in the name of Jesus, I am calling the prayer warriors. I am calling the children of the living God. I am calling the prophets of the living God. I am calling the intercessors. I am calling the watchmen on the wall. I am calling those soldiers, Lord, that you have created inside their mother's womb, Lord, before the creation of the world, Father. Those that you have predestined into this land, into the for this time, Lord. Father, I'm calling on them in the name of Jesus. At the sound of the shofar, it's going to be a shifting in your life that is going to bring you back into Jesus Christ. It's going to bring you back into his faith. It's going to bring you back into his calling. It's going to bring you back into his kingdom in the name of Jesus. Father, the blood of Jesus sealed them completely seven times, Lord. There is a completion in the blood of Jesus. And at the sound of the shofar, every assignment of hell will be dismantled and destroyed in the name of Jesus. And your army will arise. Those dry bones, as in the book of Ezekiel, will be coming back to life in the name of Jesus. Every area of your life that has been dormant, that has been 
Nom! Father, revive them with your fire. Ignite them with your fire. Let your fire fall upon every single one of them, Lord, and bring revival inside the heart in the name of Jesus. Remove every pain, Lord. Remove every pain, Lord, and bring your healing power. There is a fresh anointing that is falling from the Father's heart with the love of the Father, breaking every chain of a slavery, Lord, in the name of Jesus. I bless you today, and I glorify his holy name in Jesus' name. Right now, right now, there is healing coming into your life in the name of Jesus. <laughs> the sound of my voice that is your sound from Zion Lord the one that is going to be touching them and bringing healing Lord and deliverance Father in the name of Jesus calling the army of the Lord to arise arise says the Lord arise says the Lord divine fear of God upon every single one of you in the name of Jesus Thank you, Jesus, for your goodness. Thank you for your goodness. I bless you and I glorify his holy name. <laughs> and I seal this with the blood of the Lamb. I place a demarcation line upon your life that nothing will be able to be touched. And this word will enter into your life, breaking, 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 and bringing, bringing new wine into your life in the name of Jesus. A fresh anointing with the love of the Father that will set you ablaze for him in the name of Jesus. Be in love with the Creator. Be in love with the Creator. In the name of Jesus, shalom, shalom, shalom upon your life. In the name of Jesus, I bless you today. God bless you.